now uh, I am I have only 20 minutes. First, uh, I will use uh, PowerPoint for the first 10 minutes, and then next 10 minutes I will show you a small video clip. Put physics in your syllabus. Physics to our students and, uh, and to many students in other countries also, physics is treated as a difficult, unpopular subject. Whereas it should have been the other way. Physics should have been the most popular and easy and exciting subject, provided you have good teachers to teach it. Uh, physics, the subject. Why we study physics? Physics is the study of matter and energy in space and time. It's a very, very high, high definition. Matter means matter is anything. This bricks, air, your clothes, these things, everything is matter. Matter, okay? You study products of matter, you study matter and radiation in your uh, you, know, you will be. And energy is something which can do some work, you know, energy, solar energy we have, electrical energy, wind energy. Okay, so physics basically study the interaction between matter and energy. And also, uh, according to Einstein, matter can be converted into energy and energy can be converted into matter. So matter and energy is interchangeable. And time and space, time, we know, we look at the clocks. Always. Time is something which flows. We cannot stop it. We cannot hold it. Space is this space that you sit here. Earth, universe, we define by x, y, z, coordinates. So space and time is very critical to learn and understand physics. And physics always talk about mass, length and time. Three basic quantities. What is the mass of an object? What is the length of an object? And time. Where is this object at a given time? Where was it? Where will it be in a later time? Right. And so physicists are interested in these things. Mass, length, time, electric current that we uh, use always. <coughs> and they use units to measure these things. And there are accepted units, international system of units, we call it SI units, which is a meter for the length, kilogram for the mass, and second for the time, and ampere for the uh, electric current. So physicists always work with forces, energy, velocity, acceleration, and their interconnections. And what is interesting thing is physics or physics study very large things like galaxies, you know, Earth, planet, galaxies, uh, and the universe. Huge things physics study. Not only that, physics also study little things, tiny things, molecules atoms, electrons, protons. Not only that, physics, physicists study or do research or try to understand anything in between these, from galaxies to electrons and protons. Anything in between. Earth, oceans, wind, solar energy, human beings, anything in this length range light years or millions of kilometers to millimeters, micrometers and nanometers. This completely vast range of things physicists try to understand, theorize, find uh, equations, formulas, physics laws. Physical laws are the laws of the nature. Like Einstein, uh, sorry, uh, Isaac Newton formed the gravity. The law, it's a law of nature, the gravitation, attraction between any two objects is same whether it's in the moon or Mars or any other planet, this law is same on Earth, same, yeah, the IFS is same, in Jaffna is same, 
So it's a universal law, the law of gravitation. Similarly, all the laws of physics are universal. You can apply it anywhere. And physics people also study the behavior of sound, light, waves, energy, heat, radioactivity, all this. <coughs> physics is a philosophical subject. So there it differs from chemistry and maths and biology. Physics has a very strong philosophical aspect. Physics starts to question where is the beginning of the universe? Okay how the universe was formed, very philosophical. Sometimes it goes very parallel to Buddhism, sometimes. And physics also wants to understand, okay, we have the molecules, atoms, electrons and protons, and what is beyond that. So there's a lot of philosophy involved in physics. Physics is a mathematical subject. That's why it's difficult to most of our students. They don't like mathematics, so they don't like physics. But um, mathematics is the language of physics. To understand physics, you need some mathematics. <coughs> and uh, physics is an experimental subject. Like Dr. Asri Nanakar mentioned this morning, science is based on experiments. So similarly, physics is a scientific subject. So it's an experimental subject. But the beauty of physics is, physics is the only subject which has all these three components, three aspects. Philosophical nature, mathematical nature, and the experimental nature. Chemistry is experimental, but no, phys uh, no philosophy, no physics, uh, no mathematics. Biology, experimental scientific discipline, hardly any philosophy and no mathematics at all, right? But physics is a combination of all these three things. Discoveries in physics have revolutionized the modern technology and our lives of our people. For example, it is the physicist Galileo who found the first telescope and opened up the, uh, the, the galaxies and space to human beings. X-rays discovered by physicist William Brunchen. Now we use it in each and every hospital to check your body. Not only that, to test materials, to find new chemicals, new drugs. X-rays are used extensively. Nuclear energy, the power of the atom, was discovered by again physicist and used all over the world. The scanning electron microscope, very powerful microscopes where you can see tiny things. Uh, more powerful than the optical microscope that you have in schools. Semiconductors. The semiconductors were <coughs> discovered by, uh, found by uh, two physicists in the 1960s in the United States Bell Research Laboratory. PN Junction Diode, maybe you do some electronics for the, uh, the order. PN Junction Diode and the triode, uh, sorry, a transistor was discovered by physicists in 1960s. And now, from the uh, diode transistor, we have developed the integrated circuits, ICs, and computers, mobile phones, TVs. So the whole of internet was developed because of the discovery in physics of the transistor in the 1960s. Uh, lasers is now the discovery of physics, where it's found in many industrial applications and uh, used by doctors. Laser cataract surgery, use lasers to uh, break kidney stones, right? All kinds of medical applications in lasers. So, as uh, Dr. Nadisha pointed out just before, scientific research is now interdisciplinary. So, physics. The, the, the devices or techniques developed by physicists are used by doctors. X-rays, lasers. So even if you want to become a doctor, you must have a sound knowledge in physics, how things work. And the latest discipline, inter, interdisciplinary discipline, is the nanotechnology, where physicists, chemists, mathematicians, biologists, engineers, doctors, 
they all can participate in interdisciplinary research in nanotechnology. This is the future. And physics is the basis of several other disciplines. I have a long list, but I have copied here only a few. In all these disciplines, disciplines, physics is a very core subject area. Astronomy, you cannot study without knowing physics. Electronics, ICT and communication. Engineering, solid state physics and material science, how matter behaves. Medical physics is another very uh, popular and very important disciplines. Medical physics. And uh, somebody, uh, Dr. Nandisha, I think, uh, mentioned, uh, or Dr. Asik Nanakar mentioned this morning, uh, biomedical engineering. It's an interdisciplinary uh, research area between uh, engineering and medicine. Biomedical engineering, right? Environmental science, energy. These are all interdisciplinary areas uh, where there's a strong physics component strong physics subject. Uh, geophysics, biophysics, there's a biophysics, it's a separate subject. In most universities, even in our universities, when you enter the university, if you're interested, you can follow a course in biophysics, for example. Uh, sorry, before that, mm -hmm. I was giving a lecture on superconductivity, maybe uh, sometime back, 10 years back, I think in this same program, Right? Nationally selected top all level students. I was demonstrating superconductivity. Superconductivity means there are certain materials when you cool it down to very, very low temperatures, this material loses the electrical resistivity and you can float a small magnet on this. It's a superconductor cooled with liquid nitrogen. Then small magnet can float on it. Float, fly, doesn't touch. Fly forever, as long as this is a superconductor. So these are discovered by physicists, and based on this, now people are developing superconducting trains in Japan. They have a test train. This train floats on magnetic rails, doesn't touch, it flies. Superconducting trains, okay? So I was giving the superconducting demonstrator, demonstration for an audience like this, all level students. Then one girl student came and asked a very intelligent question. I still remember this happened uh, 10 or 12 years ago. Very intelligent question. Uh, now I'm not going to go into details. But this particular student is now a medical doctor. But she had a very good knowledge of physics. I judged from the question she asked. Now she is a medical graduate, she will be a specialist very soon. So it doesn't matter, you do whatever you like, engineering, medicine, agriculture, but keep in mind uh, that physics plays a very important role in whatever you study. These are the people, this is Galileo Galilei, who discovered the, 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 invented the telescope, which opened up all these galaxies, and the universe to us. So in physics, we observe things like planetary motion or whatever, stars, then we theorize, we form models, laws. That's how physics and it's experimental science. So these theories we can test. So Galileo, then after that, Newton formulated the gravitation and many, many other laws in physics. And theory of relativity in 1905, Albert Einstein. He's the